Wow, I was wrong. Hey guys, Jeremy here and... All right, I've been wrong for a while. Now when Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man series came out, I did not like it at all. I admitted that some of the dialogue between him and Gwen Stacy was good, but I just didn't believe him as Peter Parker because he was so good at everything and he's goddamn Andrew Garfield who's too good looking to be a Peter Parker. I just thought everything was so corny in that movie and I was kept on saying, you know what, I really like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies much better. And I decided to watch the first one again for the first time in what feels like five or six years. I even watched it on my full screen edition DVD. Which, dear God, I was freaking ignorant back then. And least to say, it's aged terribly. If I were to summarize the first Spider-Man movie into a sentence, it's Sam Raimi trying to make his own version of a 2000s Tim Burton Batman. Now at the time the film had some special effects and some pretty cool sequences that people enjoyed and some of them still stand up and some of them are still pretty funny. The web, trying to use the web thing for the first time, is still one of my favorite parts of the film. But the interactions between Tobey Maguire and Mary Jane Watson the interactions between Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. The entire fight sequences are so campy that they completely resonate with everything that Sam Raimi did with his Evil Dead trilogy and the Dark Man. Like, this is the Dark Man as Spider-Man in a PG-13 form. Not not to say that everything isn't bad about this movie. I admit that Tobey Maguire does an okay job as a nerdy-ass little Peter Parker and William Dafoe is absolutely phenomenal to watch. Every time he's on screen, I was gut laughing. I was enjoying the movie so, so much. And that's the other thing too, is I still enjoy this movie, but now for a completely different reason. The campiness between Mary Jane and Tobey Maguire is cringeworthy. Like it's almost worse than Fifty Shades of Grey. There's a point in the film when Aunt May has been attacked by the Green Goblin, she's in the hospital bed, and Peter Parker and Mary Jane are sitting there, and she's talking about how she thinks she's in love with Spider-Man, and because Peter Parker's getting these photos that literally would be impossible to get unless you were Spider-Man, he talks about that, well, Spider-Man asked me about you, and she's like, oh, what did you say? And then he goes on this monologue for a, a good minute or so about what he feels about her, and at the time, everyone thought maybe, oh, it's romantic, but really, it's creepy. It's stalker creepy. It is so uncomfortable that I just, oh, I couldn't handle it. My heart felt like it was going to die because of just how cringy it was. But as I said, when William Dafoe comes on the screen, it just turns into an absolute masterpiece theater. When he's talking to his evil self with the mirror, he just takes the drink of the glass and throws it away and then holds up the newspaper and turns it around. That is gold. William Dafoe is still probably one of the best parts of this entire trilogy. The reason why I decided to watch this film is because I watched a YouTuber's channel called the Cosmonaut Variety Hour and he talked about these movies and he said, as comedies they are gold, as superhero movies they suck or not very good. And he's not wrong. As a comedy, these movies are fantastic. At least this one is. I'm going to watch the other ones now. But if I thought that the third one was bad because of how campy and silly it was with all the dancing and whatnot, how can I say that after re-watching the first one? Now to say that the film is not set its standard for certain superhero movies, it didn't. The Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, now if I reflect upon them, are a variety of their own. They're not past the 90s, but they're not into the dark 2000s yet. If you were to watch a Marvel movie now and then watch one of the Spider-Man movies, you would think you're watching something from a completely different universe. Not film universe, like actual in space another universe. And that's what this movie is. I think it all comes down to the end credits. When you watch the end credits, after you sit through that Nickelback song that I for some reason still know almost all the words to, Sorry, I just died a little saying that. And then the Sum 41 song, which I also somehow knew all the words to, even though I never actually bought a Sum 41 album. Then comes up the original cartoon Spider-Man theme song. 
and I have a feeling that's exactly what Sam Raimi was trying to capture, was the original animated show. And he did, he caught it in all of its campiness. There's so many memes and references in the internet to how really silly that show was. So when you see the actual movie and you watch the actual cartoon, you sit there going, well, yeah, this is exactly what he was trying to do. Like, there's no question of that's what he was trying to do, bring this on the live. I also made a comment earlier about it trying to be like Tim Burton's Batman. The fight scenes in this film are terrible. Spider-Man is supposed to be a very lanky, very flexible dude. Tobey Maguire is in fact too big. He's too squat, he's too wide, he doesn't have a lot of flexibility, and when it comes to fighting, the first time him and Green Goblin fight, he stands full stance like this and just simply punches forward. Like, admittedly, the fighting choreography in The Amazing Spider-Man was better, but that's because it was all CG. Now this obviously was a film that was limited with its special effects quality, and it has not aged well. Spider-Man still moves a little bit too rubbery, he has a little bit of an inhuman sort of speed, but I think they did this because they knew if they tried to hold on it, it would look even faker and it would be really obvious that it was CG. I give Sam Raimi credit for creating this and I definitely think that this is a standout superhero movie for the very brief period that was the early 2000s. But as an actual superhero movie, this movie has aged terribly. The plot line is incredibly derivative. The interactions with the characters are either ridiculous, stupid, or cringeworthy. The climax of the film is actually super, super campy cheesy. When Green Goblin's got the cable for the, the, the trolley thing full of kids and Mary Jane in one hand, that motherfucker is holding on to something that's got to weigh like five or six tons and he ain't even straining. It's just perfect and then he just lets them go like this. Like nothing. So again, that gives you an idea of just how silly this movie is. Especially when the Green Goblin eyes like they go up for some reason during that conversation between him and Spider-Man about trying to rule the city together. But J.J. Jameson's still fantastic. J.K. Simmons killed that. His writing is fantastic. Again, as a comedy, this movie is great. As a superhero movie, it is not. So in the end, my rating for the original Spider-Man 2002 by Sam Raimi is a 3 out of 7. It is a campy, campy, campy ride. And it is funny. It is a fun time to watch. But when you realize that you've been defending this movie for something odd like almost 10 years and refusing to watch the Tom Holland Spider-Man film because you're just so... Well, admittedly, I just got so tired of the idea of Spider-Man being remade three times in the span of two decades. But I've got to watch it now. I've got to wash this taste out of my mouth. But I'm going to be watching the second one. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. It was actually really fun to talk about. And if you want to see the video that I was talking about, I'm going to put a link at the end, too. It's a really good. I actually really like Cosmonaut Variety Hour's channel. It's really funny. Anyways, guys, if you liked the video, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Anyways, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time.